This video is brought to you by MidiWorks.ca, where we specialize in virtual pipe organ hardware. If you'd like to be updated on future tutorials, products, or announcements, we invite you to subscribe to our channel. You can also use the coupon code provided in the description to get $50 off your first order. Today, we'll be covering how to connect multiple MIDI keyboards to your computer for hop work. If you're looking to connect only a single keyboard, I've included a link for that in the description. In this video, we will be going over the importance of MIDI channels and how to configure hop work to recognize and receive MIDI messages from your keyboards. Let's get started. Your keyboards will be communicating with hop work through the use of MIDI messages. These messages are sent when a note is pressed, note on, or let go, note off. A keyboard sends and receives MIDI messages through MIDI channels. MIDI channels in hop work are used to tell keyboards apart. For example, let's say keyboard A was set to channel 1 and keyboard B was set to channel 2. If hop work receives a message on channel 1, it knows that it is keyboard A that sent the message. If both keyboards were set to the same MIDI channel, hop work will not be able to tell them apart. It'll assume any message it receives is coming from a single keyboard. That's not what we want it to do. We want it so that each manual is triggered by a single physical keyboard. That's why we need to ensure that when using multiple keyboards, we set separate MIDI channels on each of them. That way, Hopper can distinguish between keyboards and which one is configured to which manual. There are two ways to set MIDI channels depending on your keyboard. Some keyboards require you to install a software, while others you can directly change the channel on the keyboard itself. I suggest that you go over your keyboard's manual to figure out how to do so. Now the keyboards we'll be using for this tutorial is MIDIWorks' Cherry Wood Core Keyboards. If these are the ones you currently have, or if you own any other MIDIWorks keyboards, I've included a link in the description to teach you how to change your channels. Once different MIDI channels have been set on your keyboards, we can connect them together through the use of a daisy chain. There are several ways to connect multiple keyboards together and to your computer, but to keep things simple, we'll be focusing on a daisy chain connection. If you've watched some of our other videos, you should be familiar with daisy chaining. For those that aren't, don't worry, we'll go over it now. Basically, daisy chaining is a term to describe multiple devices connected together in a linear fashion. To do this with MIDI keyboards, I provided some visuals to help explain the process. As you can see, we have stacked three keyboards together. The top keyboard we will label as keyboard A, the middle keyboard B, and the bottom keyboard C. We'll start off with keyboard A. Using a MIDI cable, we'll connect the MIDI out of keyboard A with the MIDI in of keyboard B. Then we'll connect the MIDI out of keyboard B to the MIDI in of keyboard C. That's it. Up ahead, I've included more pictures displaying different layouts. Feel free to pause the video if you need to view them a little longer. Now that our keyboards are connected to communicate with one another, we just need to connect the setup to our computer. We can do this through the use of either a USB cable or a MIDI interface. Let's start with the USB cable. If your keyboards have a USB port, then you can use this method. With the computer on, simply take the cable and connect the bottom manual's USB port to the computer. If you try to connect any other manual, you'll run into problems. So make sure it is the bottom manual that you connect. If your keyboards do not have USB ports, then you'll need a MIDI interface to be able to connect to a computer. What you want to do first is connect the MIDI out of the bottom manual to the MIDI in of your interface. Then connect the interface to your computer. Once again, make sure you connect the bottom manual, not any of the others. It's important to note that some keyboards and interfaces require you install a driver, while others do not. I suggest you read up on your keyboards or interface just to make sure. Now that your keyboards are connected to the computer, we'll need to enable them to work with Hopwork. At the top of the window, click on General Settings, then MIDI Ports. 
A box will pop up that displays the MIDI connections that Hopwork recognizes. If you connect the keyboard straight to your computer, the keyboard's model or brand will be displayed. If you connected your setup with the MIDI interface, you'll see the interface's model or brand displayed instead. For this example, we've connected the keyboards to a MIDI interface called M-Audio MIDI Sport, so we'll be selecting that. For Hopwork 7, the MIDI port screen looks a little different. Unlike Hopwork 4, 5, and 6, there are more than one console MIDI ports to choose from. However, the process is still the same. In this example, we have connected the CMK keyboards directly. So as you can see, the classic organ CMK shows up. We will now select console MIDI 1 to receive messages from the keyboards. Make sure to save the settings after. With that complete, let's check if Hopware can 1. Receive MIDI messages through the connection and 2. If the keyboards are sending through separate MIDI channels. Let's load an organ. In this case, we'll load St. Anne's Mosley, which is the default organ that comes with Hopwork. If this is the first time you load the organ, a few boxes will pop up. We don't need them right now, so just close them. After, click on View, Large Floating Control Panels, then Audio, MIDI, and Performance. A box will open up. If you look at the bottom half of the box, you can see a section titled MIDI Channel. We'll be focusing on the first row of green lights labeled Console MIDI In. The green circles you see are indicators. The circle right beside the Console MIDI text will light up if it reads MIDI messages coming in. Like so. The circles on the right that have numbers above them indicate which channel those MIDI messages are coming from. To make sure everything has been connected properly, let's start from the top keyboard and press some notes. As you can see, Hopwork is reading the messages and shows that it is coming from channel 2. Let's move on to the middle keyboard. Again, Hopwork is reading the messages, but instead, show that it is coming from channel 3. Last, let's test the bottom keyboard. MIDI messages are being received and is coming from channel 4. Perfect. Connection and configuration was successful. If your MIDI connection is not displayed on Hopwork's MIDI port box, it means the bottom keyboard is not properly connected to the computer. I would first recommend restarting your computer and reconnecting the keyboard or interface. If that doesn't work and your keyboard and interface required you to install a driver, Try reinstalling that driver again. If you've enabled the MIDI connection on Hopwork, but are not getting the correct green lights to show, you might have a problem with the daisy chain. Double check the MIDI cables and ports to make sure they are connected correctly. Once everything is working properly, we can proceed to the next video, where we'll be using the auto detect feature to connect the sample set manuals to the physical keyboards.